When I first told my boss I was going to quit my job to become a professional Fallout 76 player, she said, um, I'm just going to count that as a sick day. Now I've been a professional Fallout 76 player for almost nine hours. And today I'm going to show you how I did it. I know what you're wondering. Why did I decide to become a professional Fallout 76 player? The answer is simple economics, supply and demand. There are millions of drummers out there, but only one accordion player in the entire world. If you want some drumming, you can go to literally half the global population. If you want some accordion played, you have to go to this guy. I wanted to be that guy for Fallout 76. But financial motivation is just part of my success. The other part is knowledge. I spent months researching the Fallout universe, learning every bit of information, reading every terminal entry, watching every YouTube lore video. Then I played every Fallout game, from the first one to the 75th. I had never played the original Fallout games before, but I had always heard 40-year-old nerds complaining that Fallouts 1 and 2 are way better than Fallouts 3 through 76. But they're kidding themselves as they think this is a good MMO. I also played every mod ever created for Fallout. And I just have to say, you guys are a bunch of perverts. But I had learned all I could. Both my body and brain were finally prepared to play Fallout 76. But I was in trouble. All of my training had cost me precious time. The game was almost old enough for Bethesda to release a special edition for it. If they did that, all my training would be useless. I would have to immediately establish myself as the dominant Fallout 76 player. According to all the marketing, you're supposed to play Fallout 76 with your friends. I'm gonna play it alone, and not because I don't have friends, but because they're all social distancing. When I first started the game, something was off. Something was different. The first thing I did was set up a camp. Wow, that was boring. That's it, I wasn't having any fun. Of course, you weren't supposed to have fun at your job. That means I'm officially a professional Fallout 76 player. Uh, I'm still bored though. Uh, I'll just go on a quest, that should move things along. What do you mean I need to go back to Grafton? I was just there! It costs caps to fast travel? Four times the size of Fallout 4. Okay, I've killed the Grafton monster. Again? What now? I have to go all the way back? There's only like 12 missions, why are they so far away? 16 times the detail. But while I was walking, I got a chance to take in Appalachia. And let me tell you, it really is a trip to see a place you're actually familiar with in real life, done dirty in a Bethesda game. It's like waking up in your own home, but Todd Howard broke in at night and rearranged all the furniture. It's fun to see some of the most beautiful scenes in the world replaced with highways. I would say this is commentary on American car culture, but I would literally beat a horse to death with a pencil eraser for a car in this game, so it's not working. I was going for a ranged build, but people would still try to run up close and attack me with melee weapons. So to solve this, I acquired every disease in the game, so they'll stay away. Now. Now I'm completely invincible, but I was exhausted. I had been playing Fallout 76 for almost 100 minutes. Playing for more than two hours straight would be medically dangerous, but playing more than three hours straight would be a lethal dose. But I knew that some barriers are made to be broken, and I had trained for this more than any other human. And by the time four hours came around, I was still alive. I had lost all feeling below my abdomen, but I didn't need legs to be a professional gamer. Unfortunately, for some reason, no one was willing to pay me to play Fallout 76. I reached out to hundreds of companies for a sponsorship. All of them were rejected, except for the CIA, which was willing to sponsor me to play Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. I think they were just trying to develop new torture methods. But I wasn't willing to torture myself. I just wanted to play Fallout 76. Could it be that no one wanted to sponsor a professional Fallout 76 player? No, it must be that I'm just not at a high enough level. But time was running out. Bethesda insiders leaked that Todd was about to release Fallout 76. Special, hyper-interesting translation. Right after just a few more Skyrim releases. To celebrate, Bethesda was going to host the first ever competitive Fallout 76 tournament. But only the top Fallout 76 players would qualify. I was out of options. My only recourse was to cheat. So I went on eBay and bought a bunch of high-level items and cheat tools from a very shady Russian man. Hopefully, I haven't just financed an invasion of eastern Ukraine. But it was done. I had become the ultimate Fallout 76 player. I could run faster, jump higher, and no-clip through the entire world. Although I don't know if I'm responsible for that one. I was at the top of the leaderboards. I was no longer just a player, not even a man. I was a god, and Fallout 76 was a new world I could shape in my image. And then I got banned, but in the darkness, a ray of hope. If I could reach out to Bethesda's support with my passionate plea, maybe, just maybe, they would be gracious enough to unban me. So that's why I'm writing you. Please consider unbanning my account so that I can go back to work.
Where's the goddamn quest Almost marker? Four times the size of Fallout 4. Yes, oh, it's so slow. 16 times the detail. Yeah, actually on second thought, you can just leave me banned.